Norman Whiteside then becomes the fourth captain appointed by Billy Bingham, and he returns to another experimental midfield, which Bingham clearly sees as a major remaining problem. Michael O'Neill of Newcastle will make his home debut on the left side of that midfield. Stephen Penny is back on the right after a year out through injury. It's a familiar enough formation for Bingham, and with the possible exception of O'Neill, the names are getting pretty familiar too. I'm not so sure the Polish names are bandied about with the same ease down the Sandy Row Rangers Club of a Friday night. There they are. The one exception, of course, Ziggy Boniek, in his day one of the world's great attacking midfielders. Although he's listed at number three, and the management claim that he'll play as a central defender. We shall see. Tonight's officials come from Wales. The referee, Roger Gifford, oh, with the beard. And it's to be Poland to kick off in the all-red script. Uh, Strip playing from right to left this evening. Great week of sport then in Belfast. We've already had the Brazilian schools team here on Monday night. We've got uh, Dave Boy Macaulay fighting for a world title on Saturday. And now we've got uh, one of the great teams of European football here this evening. A team who have qualified for every World Cup since 1974. This, of course, part of the build-up for Italy 1990. And here's the new captain of Northern Ireland, Norman Whiteside. And uh, that's a fine pass. And some chances from Northern Ireland here as Michael O'Neill wins a free kick on the edge of the box. Michael O'Neill, last time he was here playing for Coleraine against Linfield. Here he is now, a regular partner of Mirandinha in the Football League, playing a soccer with Newcastle and winning his second cap for Northern Ireland tonight. Nigel Worthington at left back this evening. Free kick uh, aimed towards white side and falling to Wilson, and that's a fine shot, and what a goal. Danny Wilson with his first goal for Northern Ireland. With just one minute of the match gone. Instinctive shot, very confident piece of play indeed. And he's one of the players, uh, you know, qualified through the maternal rule to play for his country. Not born here, but his mother was. But uh, taking to this match all right, on the right foot. Tremendously powerful volley. And Danny Wilson becomes the first player who qualifies through his mother's place of birth to score a goal for Northern Ireland. Fantastic start, and that's uh, encouraged the crowd. As Krasetsky came in there on Alan McKnight. And the need perhaps for uh, Northern Ireland just to, to cool it down after that fabulous start. Well, a fantastic shot by Danny Wilson. Whiteside went up to challenge. The defender got it clear. And there was Wilson. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. And it was a perfect finish. Colin Clark. And Buvchek. Back to Banchik, the goalkeeper. Indeed, one touch football there by uh, Poland. Krasetsky right the way through. Urban, a very good save by Alan McKnight. Only got the one hand to it, but that was enough with Fleming there to tidy up for him. And uh, the first signs of Poland's ability. A four-pass move, all one-touch football, very quick and very effective. This is Worthington now for Northern Ireland. Michael O'Neill. Worthington has white side. That's for Worthington again. Clark's wide, but Penny's in the middle. White side. All the way across, and uh, just too long for Jimmy Quinn to keep in. Uh, that must have taken a deflection. But uh, here's the Poland attack from uh, just a minute ago. Kosciewski getting through to the byline, pulling it back for his captain, Urban. Left foot shot, and McKnight almost going the wrong way and doing well to keep it out. Zyganowski and a free kick allowed to be taken a few yards forward and splendid tackle by Colin Clark and now it's Wilson very busy little player in the middle of the field he's quite a find for Northern Ireland Quinn against Vanjic Quinn penalised but Vanjic at least uh, be aware of his presence It's a 
is Nigel Worthington. Schaubauer. Strong tackle by McDonald. Vujic. kick against Nigel Worthington who's proving a very versatile player for Billy Bingham's plans left-sided of course but uh, equally at home really in the midfield or at left back where he is today with Mal Donaghy switching into the middle of the defense this is Boniek Kashiel Koshetsky Omanitsky, Worthington back uh, to help Donaghy, and that's forward, and there could be a break on here with Colin Clark, Penny's gone down the middle, that's for him, he's got uh, Quinn well out to his left, it's a long chase for Jimmy Quinn, just too long, Jimmy Quinn who scored last time out here, the uh, final European Championship match, which was against Turkey, Quinn got the only goal of the game. This is Worthington. Now Wilson. Clark. Tarasiewicz. Long ball. Koshetsky. Two and now three in the middle. And uh, it went all the way through to Joba. And he could have done a lot more with that. Uh, just a question over the Northern Irish defence there because there were three back and uh, they let it pass them all by and they were two the far post for Poland. <coughs> O'Neill with a nice touch. Worthington. Quinn. White side. Worthington. Not the most confident of clearances. This is Penny. Quinn's there if it reaches him, which it does eventually, but after the referee blew his whistle. Boniek. Move check. Zagadowski, Boniek, and uh, Northern Ireland holding the midfield at the moment. <laughs> McDonald beaten, Omanitsky, and that's just a bit too close for comfort for Northern Ireland. Once again, the defence not looking quite as sharp as you might wish with uh, just this and the match against France next month coming before the World Cup uh, campaign begins in earnest with the home match against Malta in May. This time Lukashio penalised. Ireland Jimmy Quinn, free kick. White side the captain. Worthington. O'Neill. Check. Check it 
Lewandowski beaten by Wilson. He's having a fine match, Danny Wilson. I might just fancy another one. Too short for Jimmy Quinn, the pass. Urban. Pass McDonald, and it's opening up for Jobber. Clear with McKnight to beat a good body save. Excellent body save by Alan McKnight. Once again, uh, Alan McDonald, it must be said, was beaten. Whiteside uh, couldn't get back to him. Jobber found himself clear. And uh, McKnight cutting the angle, getting down well to block with the body. Blue check. Boniek. Donald. Wilson again with uh, an important tackle. Uh, he's got a free kick. Michael O'Neill again showing great confidence. 19 years of age in his first season of professional football in England. Billy Bingham took him off in his debut away to Greece because he felt that it was perhaps just a little bit too much for him, but he's not showing any signs of being overawed at Windsor Park this evening. tackled by Alan McDonald. Karashevich. The turn by Clark. And the free kick against Buvchek. So Northern Ireland coming forward again. This is Worthington. He has O'Neill outside him, and Whiteside's also in close support. Here's Whiteside. O'Neill. Danny Wilson. Whiteside. Rode the tackle. And he's looking for Clark. Not that far away. And Poland still have to play themselves out of trouble. Which they've failed to do. This is Penny. Now Wilson. Always available, Danny Wilson. Donaghy. McDonald. That's Flemings. Good strong tackle by Wilson. By Clark. And he's seen. Quinn was forward, and it took a good punch by Van Jick to clear the lines. O'Neill, so just a little bit too much of, uh, to Ziggy Boniek. Probably the first mistake he's made all match, Michael O'Neill. Quinn's there again, and he's got a head to it, and now a foot, and off the line as the challenge came in from Colin Clark. So O'Neill, deep cross. Jimmy Quinn got there and uh, found it beaten the two defenders. And uh, it was Kubitski, in fact, who put it away as both goalkeeper and Clark challenged. It's Fleming back in. Northern Ireland are onside. It's Quinn still onside. Clark was there. Here's Penny. Zyganowski, Urban. Alan McDonald certainly looks as if he's played himself into the match after 
slightly shaky start. It's not just what we expect of him. Komarinditsky. And he takes a corner off Nigel Worthington. Six forward for Poland. That was Clark against Lukashio. That counts for naught. The free kick for Northern Ireland. <laughs> Worthington. Quinn. Seen Wilson. Two forward. Putting Penny. Wide on the right, this is Penny. Now they're queuing up. Good tackle by Vucek. Colin Clark and uh, Jimmy Quinn were both in the middle, waiting for that one. Mile Donachy with half an hour gone. Northern Ireland leading by one goal to nil. The goal scorer, Danny Wilson. The time, just one minute. Great start by Northern Ireland. They were looking as if... They're not that far away from fighting a formation. But uh, they don't need too many injuries, and that's the sort of challenge that could put somebody out of the match. This is Worthington. Manchik came. That was a good decision. This is Boniek. from white side Northern Ireland still tending to dominate the middle of the park just where the big problems have been of late Jovanovski oh what a good goal Darius Jovanovski one of the very experienced players in the squad on the left foot low drive and a perfect finish just had a yard or two to bring himself in, but a superb shot and McKnight beaten all the way into the corner. Thought he might have been penalised for holding Jimmy Quinn, but not the case. Jobber. Urban. Zivanovsky. Urban. Wilson back there fighting the whole time. I think he was unlucky to be penalised. Came in from the back, but I think he got the ball first. However, referee disagrees. It's a free kick. A couple of minutes to go to half time. 1 1 the score, remember. And we've already seen that uh, the number 10, Jukanovic. Has a good left foot on him. He's over the ball. Four-man wall there for Northern Ireland. Four over the ball. Urban looks as if he's going to touch it. And it's Vuvcek, and it took a deflection. Vuvcek, number four. The left back in this Polish side. Goes Quinn, up goes Lukashio. Goes the referee's hand to signal the free kick against Jimmy Quinn. <laughs> Urban did not keep it in. Northern Ireland's throw. That's Donachy, and that's very short. And McKnight reacting quickly. One minute to go to half time. 1 1 the score. This is Gary Fleming looking for Penny. 
and Northern Ireland have the throw. The white sides available. Holding it, Wilson. Space on the left, Donachy, and he has Worthington wide. Worthington will throw one in. Cashier out strongly. It's McDonald, Penny. Could run all the way to Worthington on the far side. He's got O'Neill who's dropped back short for support. This is O'Neill. Far side. Jimmy Quinn looking for Penny and Lucasio was there. Jobber for Poland. Lost it on the bubble and the 45 minutes are up. Now this is the moment when Mal Donachy sold Ellen McKnight a little short. But McKnight out well and uh, covered well with his body. That's the end of the first half then, and the teams are going in tied at one goal each. Some very good things from Northern Ireland in the first half, and perhaps from the least expected areas, and that midfield is the problem he's working on, and it seems to be working the best. Certainly the man of the first half there, Danny Wilson, scored the goal after a minute and put in 45 minutes of very good effort. Michael O'Neill's played well down the left, but there are those question marks over the defence. And we'll be back for second half action very shortly. Jackie Cummings has been watching the match with me. Jackie, we don't get too many goals at international level these days. But what a start inside the first minute. And Danny Wilson, you couldn't really have had a better start. No, a brilliant start. And what a goal it was. I mean, as you say, we don't get many, but that one will be remembered for a long, long time. I mean, he hit it on the full volley. And I reckon it was about 25 yards out. They just screamed into the top of the net. Doesn't matter who the goalkeeper, I think Big Pat Jennings wouldn't even have gotten near that one. They would have taken a couple of goalkeepers, I think. I'm wondering what we should have been doing then, though. Was there anything we could have done after that to consolidate that? We seemed almost, we didn't go backward, but we didn't push as many men forward, maybe, as we should have done. Well, I think that goal upset the plan, you know. You don't expect to get a goal in the first minute, so they couldn't follow on with their plan. But in fairness to the Poles now, they started to come forward, and the three front men were very, very dangerous. The captain, Urban, was a very good player. And they were getting space down the left wing. In fact, uh, the left winger got past Mal Donoghue in the outside and almost set a goal up very, very early on. So they showed even then that they had the class. But uh, uh, also that they came back very well. I mean, a lot of teams, if you get a goal against them in the first minute, start to panic and do things. But they kept it steady. And gradually, I think they got control in that first half. Their goal was a good one as well, wasn't it? And from far out too. Well, it was just not as far out as, uh, as uh, Wilson's, but, uh, I mean, it was a beautifully taken goal by Jevanovsky. A nice passing movement, a lovely build-up, slow passing. They took their time, and the Irish defence falling back all the time and inside the penalty area, and that's when the man struck. He came inside, his left foot shot was good. Mal Donoghue, I think, was the nearest player to him. He did try a sliding tackle, but he was just too far away. And then behind him, uh, MacDonald was there as well. And I think maybe Alan McKnight was slightly unsighted. He was near his left-hand post, and the stretch was too far over to the far side. He, he did make a valiant effort, but it was a beautiful shot. But to be very harsh, perhaps, in our defence, Jackie, he did take the ball past two, almost three players, and then had a clear shot at goal. Should he have been allowed to get that far? Well, I was just going to say, at that stage, once you get to near the end of the box, after falling back so much, somebody has to go for the player. He's about to take a shot. That's a dangerous position. Mal Donaghy did sense the danger, but he was too far away. They had retreated with all this short passing inside the box, and they were just too far away. And it was a, a great shot. Probably didn't expect it. A little bit of a question mark on what we've seen so far in the first 45 minutes over that uh, entire defence, in fact. Is that a fair comment? Yes, I think it is. Uh, they, they, they were falling back and giving a little bit too much space to these three front men, and uh, they were caught a little bit out of position. Now, perhaps Mal Donaghy did, he did well, but he's not the centre-half that John McClellan is. All right, John McClellan, of course, not available tonight through injury. We'll see what we can do in the second half. Now, let's go back for second-half action to Windsor Park. One each at halftime, and the commentator is Michael Nesbitt. For the record, Northern Ireland's record against Poland is perfect. They played twice in 1962 in the European Championship, and they won both matches by two goals to nil. Billy Bingham, in fact, scored in the match in Belfast. And also for your notes, there's one substitution on the Polish side for the second half. Karas is on, number 17. He's a midfielder, and the man who has gone off, Karasiewicz. 
who was wearing number seven. here to gain experience uh, of what it's like to play against British sides because they play England twice next year in their group of World Cup qualifying for Italy 1990 and uh, indeed within half an hour of the draw for the World Cup back in December Billy Bingham said he'd like to play Poland because he reckoned they wouldn't be too dissimilar to Hungary who Northern Ireland will face in their campaign Poland and Hungary played together in the last European Championship both finishing mid-table with eight points each. Poland just uh, shading it on goal difference. Feels quite side for Northern Ireland. It's Fleming. Didn't go out of play. Boniek. He's played his player into trouble. It's right side. He's got uh, Clark to his left. Tried to go himself. It might fall for Penny. It will not. It's Wilson. Penny. And they had support behind from Fleming, but uh, presumably wasn't aware of him. So we're going to see first substitution on the Northern Ireland side. Linesman signaling to the referee. And the linesmen on both sides are signaling to the referee. I think they'd like to make the substitution before the free kick is taken, and it's uh, Michael O'Neill of Newcastle United who's being brought off. And Billy Bingham is cautious with the young players, doesn't ask too much of them to begin with. And on comes Anton Rogan. Now, he is a fullback, but both fullbacks are still on the pitch, so uh, presumably he'll go into midfield position. That's Wilson, very deep. McDonald was there to challenge. And there, number 15, Anton Rogan. Settling into the role that Michael O'Neill has been playing so far in the match. So he's got about half an hour of midfield football to come. Kubitski. Oh, lost control of all together, Koshetsky. And another substitution for Poland. Maybe a timely moment uh, to say that the two managers have agreed to waive the two substitute rule. In fact, uh, they've agreed to waive it in uh, some measure too. It's usually two from five, but today they both have six subs at the bench and they've agreed they can use all six should they so wish so this could be the start of something fairly big we've got a, a sub on on each side and uh, Poland about to use their second Second substitution then for Poland. 
The man coming off is Jobert. And the man coming on, Arazkiewicz. Who is an out and out forward. So the manager, Wojciech Lazarek. Obviously not using this as a practice defensive match. Arazkiewicz. Uh, playing his football in Poland. And he'll adopt a, a striker's role. So, if anything, the emphasis in the Polish side is more towards attack than it was at the beginning. This Karas. And that's out of play. Koszetski. Younger blood, David Campbell. Who's coming on, and it's Stephen Penny who's going off. So, well, that's more or less a straight swap. Wide midfield player for a wide midfield player. David Campbell now playing with Charlton down at the bottom of the first division. 22 years old and on for his 10th cap for Northern Ireland, and he's going to be straight into the action because he's going to take the corner. 20 minutes to make an impact on the match. That's how long there is to go. Campbell's corner then. Away by Boniek. Now oh, Wilson. Campbell with another chance. Too close to the keeper. Nice touch by Fleming. Donald still forward from the corner. Wilson. And the throw to Poland as uh, the heavens open. And pretty sure is upon us at Windsor Park. Kubitsky. Zyganowski, the goal scorer. Still Zyganowski. Rogan got in well. Familiar position for him at full back there. Zyganowski took it out of play. It's a throw to Northern Ireland. on his own. Jimmy Quinn has dropped back somewhat into a midfield position on the left, temporarily at least. It's Fleming. White side. Saw Rogan. And the men forward. Confident play by Rogan and a nice touch to Whiteside. Fleming's free on the right-hand side. Campbell's ahead of him. This is Campbell. Clark and Quinn are in the box. Wilson's joined them. Quinn Urban Karas and again Vufcek went on the run there but he waited for Urban Took it 
Lewandowski. Cashiel, the big central defender, well forward for once, an open play. Harass, Kubitsky against Worthington. Good enough for a corner. So fair to say Northern Ireland uh, by no means in command of this match anymore as we go into the final quarter. Final quarter of an hour. The score still tied at 1-1. Five in the box. Harass's corner driven low and away by McDonald. Illegal throw. Signaled by Roger Gifford, referee from Wales. So uh, Northern Ireland get the throw from the same position. Fleming covering but given away. Arskiewicz far side on a terrible, terrible miss for Poland. Well, Gary Fleming did the difficult things well. He came right across to cover on the left back position, then gave it right away. And Jakinowski, well, then he came, wanted it on the left foot, should have taken it on the right. Scored a great goal with his left foot in the first half. And uh, certainly giving the impression there that he's a one-footed player because if he'd hit it on the right, he must have had good chances of putting it away. Substitution for Northern Ireland. Kevin Wilson of Chelsea is coming on to take the place of Jimmy Quinn of Swindon Town. Kevin Wilson, another who qualifies through the maternal ruling, was playing with Ipswich Town, now with Chelsea. coming to support him. Kevin Wilson. Oh, lucky for this touch. Ruskiewicz. Northern Ireland's throw in. Kevin Wilson has a fair bit of pace. Five night striker. Can play wide if requested. He's taking over the uh, twin strikers role. Jimmy Quinn. Partnering Colin Clark. Oh, the mistake by Alan McDonald. An attempt at the professional foul. <laughs> well, that was a comedy of errors, all right. Zuganowski again. He, he's got one. He could have had a hat trick easily. But here's Colin Clark for Northern Ireland. He's given it away now. He's been given it back. Lost it again. I tell you what, it's exciting if it's not exactly good football. Ten minutes to go, it's still 1-1. 
Zyuganovsky's just uh, missed two very good chances. One because he couldn't hit it with his right foot, and the other because he couldn't keep his feet at all. This is Bonyek. Urban. Pass white side. Zyuganovsky. Again, wins it off uh, Donicky this time. Campbell wants it, Worthington wants it, and Northern Ireland have certainly lost their shape in the second half. This is Danny Wilson. Kevin Wilson's crying out for it. That took a deflection, I think. Now the referee's given a goal kick. But Danny Wilson looks tired. He's certainly given everything so far in this match. Not just a goal, but plenty of commitment, plenty of ideas. The shape around him isn't quite what Billy Bingham might want at the moment. is down hurt. Meantime, uh, Poland are going to make their third substitution. Chizek is going to come on. Slukashil, he's had a very fine match at the centre of the defence, particularly taking on both Jimmy Quinn and perhaps more particularly Colin Clark in the air. This is Chizek, who's a defender. So Chizek on, well, Zekanovsky, the man who got one goal and could have had a hat full more. Bonyek into the position he's more used to, the midfield, and that's a superb ball, and this could be trouble. Good save, Valor McKnight. Came out well, saw Fleming was beaten. Gary Fleming to bring it forward. Clark against Cashew. We've got too much change out of the big man this evening. Rogan, so it's a throw to Poland. I would imagine, I would imagine Poland would be more than happy to come away from Windsor Park with a draw if that's how it turns out, particularly after the way things were shaping up in the first quarter of an hour. Check. 
Boniek. Fleming's header. Ruskiewicz. Side, nice turn, Danny Wilson, Kevin Wilson. Oh, just let it run away from you too much. There's an opportunity there. It's well controlled by Campbell. Donaghy. White side was looking for Clark. It's gone for the throw for Northern Ireland. Time running out if they've got to win this match. Uh, a little over a minute of normal time left. Don't imagine there'll be too much added on by the referee. Rogan. Yes, still Rogan. White side. Looking for Kevin Wilson, he stood back, and that's a dreadful attempt at a clearance. Rogan's in again. Komenitsky lets it run. It's another throw inside the last minute. Worthington looking for Kevin Wilson. Worthington and Rogan got the throw. White sides in. Worthington's there. Rogan's behind him if he needs him. band to bring it away from Poland. <laughs> Worthington and Rogan have now swapped roles and it's Worthington who's playing up in midfield. Normal time now up. So a good start from Northern Ireland in this match, and not just in terms of the goal after a minute, but good things in the first half, particularly from the midfield. Question marks over the defence, of course, but you must remember John McClellan wasn't fit or available, so it wasn't the first choice. But there, for my money anyway, the man of the match, Danny Wilson, 90 minutes of effort and the goal after just one minute of the match, which means Northern Ireland have still only lost once at home to a European team. The final score once again, Northern Ireland won. Poland won. Lansdowne Road, the perfect setting for the match to send the Irish off to Europe. Not quite their last fixture before the European Championships get underway. There's the small matter of a match in Norway still to come on June the 1st. The last opportunity the Dublin public will have of seeing their team and sending them on their way. Interestingly too, it's the last uh, match before Jack Charlton will have to nominate his 20 players for the European Championship Finals, which begin in Germany as far as Ireland are concerned on the 12th of June, Sunday, June the 12th, just a matter of three weeks away. John Aldridge winning his 14th cap, the Liverpool striker who missed a penalty at Wembley in the FA Cup Final, aims for his first goal for his country after 13 appearances. Back in the side, Tony Cascarino, 21 league goals from Millwall and their push for promotion to Division One in England winning only his fourth cap and not really considered to be a man figuring in Jack Charlton's plans but in this side because Frank Stapleton is carrying a hamstring injury. Ronnie Whelan returns for his first match since the 2-0 victory over Bulgaria last October. Injury deprived him of several caps and a place in Liverpool's FA Cup losing team but Whelan is back 
to take on the anchor role in the heart of the Irish midfield. For Poland, nine of the side which took part in the friendly against Northern Ireland in Belfast recently, which ended in a 1-1 draw, are involved here. Names to watch out for, the goalkeeper Vancic, he plays for the Polish champions, Gornik Shrabshry. Darius Chikanowski, who scored the goal that drew the match at Windsor Park, Belfast. He's the top scorer in the Polish first division. He'll be wearing 10. And the vastly experienced fullback Roman Wojcicki plays in the German first division, or did play in the German first division with FC Homburg, but they've just been relegated. The kind of attraction of the National Football League final replay across the city at Croke Park has undoubtedly had its effect on the gate here, but there's still a sizable crowd of Irish soccer fans in to see their team and bid them farewell and bon voyage to Germany. Chris Morris, the Glasgow Celtic right back. And that's for Aldridge. And Morris back for the return. And taking on a rather cumbersome looking Lukashik in the first corner for the Irish after just uh, 15 seconds of the game. Chris Morris, the man providing the overlap for John Aldridge. He really exposed the big Polish uh, central defender Lukashik for pace. And it's brought a corner to the Irish. Kevin Sheedy to take it. Cascarino came near post, all the way over the back. And eventually, some safety for the Poles, but I don't get past Ronnie Healy like that. Kozetsky. That's McGrath. Whelan nudging it on towards Aldridge. And once again, he picks out Morris. Head forward for Cascarino. It's found instead Galvin, but he couldn't direct it into the danger zone. Goal kick Poland. This day is the 50th anniversary of the first meeting between Poland and the Republic of Ireland. That ended in a 6 0 victory to the Poles in Warsaw. Off goes Siober. Support from Chikanowski, Poland's top goal scorer. Clearance has reached Cascarino. And now it's with Chizek. And Hewton showing a clean pair of heels. And that's seeking out Siober. Morris with him. The little man's got away from him. Power in the shot, but no direction to trouble Jerry Payton. Yeah, check Siebauer. Plays for Lutz in the Polish First Division. And Jerry Payton keeping for Ireland in place of Pat Bonner, who's been arrested, just giving the Bournemouth man a chance to win his 24th cap and uh, the opportunity to get to know his defenders. Sheedy. Whelan in there and committing the foul. Not the Polish captain, Prusik. What a big man is Wojcicki. Sheedy. And Sheedy still battling on. Eventually, Hewton putting it up the line towards Cascarino. The ball had gone out of play. Chikanowski is the pole. Two Irish beating him, one of them McGrath, looking confident in his role at international level, which has been his at uh, Manchester United for quite some time. That's coming towards Siober. And Morris losing out. Orban, it was, who tried to find a way through. He did not succeed, but Poland have a corner. Wojcicki and Lukasik have gone up and are hovering on the edge of the penalty area as the corner is struck in. And that was the Hamburg fullback Wojcicki. Really big man. Nobody picked him up coming through, but he couldn't direct the header onto the goal. Siober curling in the corner. As I was saying, the poles were lined up deep. They came in, arrived in strength, and that was Wojcicki with a header which was just too high. 
Good skill on the ground for the big man. Cut out by Magrallo. Uh, Whelan and Sheedy. And the foul against Sheedy. Again, on Sheedy, against the pole. Kevin Sheedy being watched by his uh, club manager, Colin Harvey, here today. That's Chris Hewton. Maybe to keep that number three shirt for himself in Germany. Not much of a free kick, really. Away by Chizek. Moran. McGrath. And Galvin to try and get on to. But again, good control by Chizek. And now Urban. The overlapping player is Kubitsky, the fullback. Kozetsky, again it was McGrath across to cover. Well, just ten minutes of this match gone, and already he's shown that he really is at home in the role of centre half. He was fouled as he went for that ball. It's given a free kick. Ziganowski, Orban again. He was always shaping up to do that, but Jelly Payton saw it all the way. Yes, it was uh, Jan Orban who had the opening for the shot, but Payton had seen it coming. Meanwhile, foul on John Sheridan, free kick to the Irish. Carino, who got there, goalkeeper's overcommitted himself, and in fact, he committed himself so far that he handled the ball outside his area. So it's a free kick, indirect free kick, it should be. That was uh, the high ball towards Cascarino that caused problems for Vanchik. I heard the goalkeepers wanting to dominate their box but uh, that gets a bit ridiculous Dave Besant style the only difference being that the Wimbledon keeper tends to use his feet when he's outside his penalty area it's now given the chance for John Sheridan Ronnie Whelan or Kevin Sheedy Sheedy who shoots and Sheedy who scores <laughs> renowned as a set piece free kick taker Kevin Sheedy Rasping that one in, left-footed. The wall certainly didn't do its job. A suspicion of a deflection there. But the keeper slow to get down. And 11 minutes gone, the keeper's error leads to the first goal. Kevin Sheedy making it 1-0 to Ireland. And the challenge is fairly biting in there. Poland just getting the better of it. Prusik. Offside against Orban. It's up towards Cascarino. Lukashik has gone with him. Sheedy's cross was blocked. It's a corner. Kevin Sheedy early in the action. Knows there's a place in the first 11 to be won here. And Sheridan's corner. No trouble on this occasion, Kovacic. Siobhan. One back by Whelan, offside against Cascarino. Nigel had a bit of a think about that before deciding to put the flag up. This time McGrath winner. And Cascarino 
And Sheridan from Galvin. That was a really penetrating ball. But there's that big number four, Chizek again. For such a big man, he can cover the ground and make the tackles and indulge in the intricate footwork. Here he is again, but it's played back towards Galvin. The ball was out. But the tension will be required, and you can see why. Damian Lukashik. taken a fair old belt on the, on the brow there they have had a couple of subs warming up ever since the match started and they're going to make that substitution now 25 minutes gone Lukashik comes off the worst for wear and on for his fourth cap goes Vitold Pentkovsky it's uh, stitches for the big man from Let's post none. The straightforward swap, defender for defender. Aldrich <laughs> losing out of the first touch of Benkowski. Now Cascarino. Benkowski again, showed too much of that to Galvin and rather followed through. He's not on the pitch a minute, and he's been losing out, and then committing a foul on Tony Galvin. Number 14, the man in question, here he is on the ball, in the white shirt, just on the pitch, Benkowski, and went Galvin, nicked it away from him, but the pole followed right through, and Galvin is now down. Whelan for Sheridan. Aldridge down to Cascarino. And pretty close call for the Poles. Aldridge got it down. Cascarino was there, but the keeper was just sharp enough. Oh, lovely play by Orban. Zikanovsky's in here. Morris staying with him. And eventually, safety with Peyton. And maybe worth pointing out that while Northern Ireland in their friendly at Windsor Park on the day that the Republic were playing Romania, while Northern Ireland got a, the benefit of a first-minute goal, lead goal from Danny Wilson, the Poles equalised around about the half hour through Chikanovsky. And they still look pretty sharp here, and I wouldn't write them off just yet. We're in the 28th minute, 1-0 to the Irish. Calvin. Oh, I don't know about that. But it's been given out. Aldridge, Sheridan, onto Whelan. Back towards Galvin. Morris. Aldridge and Galvin both after this, but he. Gave that too much pace. It's a goal kick to Poland. That's played for Galvin. And he just didn't give Morris enough of a chance. See was back to knock it out of play. But it is a corner. Aldridge is in there. And the near post is wheeling away. That's played towards Moore and headed away by Wojcicki. The big men at the back for Poland. Sheedy now wants to take the throw in. Morris back to Sheedy and Morris again. And Silver just left the leg there. Free kick to Ireland. So Whelan with the free kick. Aldridge wheeling in. There's Cascarino. And that's goal number two. 
And he'll not score a more simple one than that. Debut goal for his country for Tony Cascarino, right on the half hour. It is fourth international. Whelan whacked it in. Aldridge came spinning away and I think distracted the defenders. The goalkeeper as well was expecting something to come off Aldridge. And when it fell to Cascarino, there was nobody between him and the goal. And he could not miss. 2-0, right on the half hour. about the Poles having a reputation of coming back and snatching draws. They've now made it doubly difficult for themselves. Poor defending. But uh, fairness to the striker, he was where he had to be and he put it away. Now this is the defender of Cisek. Back to Siebert. For Prusic. For Ban. And that was Chris Hutton dispossessing him corner to Poland. Kosetsky will take the corner. Three, the big pole is Wojcicki. He's going to the other one by way of a fine goalkeeping catch from Jerry Payton. Commanding in the area. It was aimed for Cizek, but Payton was strong enough. Not John from Aldridge, Cascarino towards Sheedy. Whelan over the top for Aldridge and cleared by the substitute Benkowski. Back again it comes, Sheedy. Whelan. Galvin's after this, so to Wojcicki. Somehow or another, they've managed to extricate themselves from that little bit of a problem. And Hewton back to do it again. Out of McGrath. A strong defender, Cizek coming through. A good defensive work by the Irish for their part. Cizek has to make the long run back. More. It's falling for Sheridan. Now Sieber. Played up the line for Pujic. McGrath equal to anything Pujic can offer. And back again to Peyton. Paul McGrath having a fine game at the heart of the Irish defence. Komonitsky. Kosetsky, and again it's McGrath. <laughs> Superb defending. And what's more, he got the throw out of it. Aldridge. No foul there, both went down. Now Benkowski, Orban, Benkowski again. And Sheridan, not quite what he intended to do.
Garcia Bear. Chizek losing his place. Throw to Ireland, but we'll have to come back a little bit. John Sheridan taking it. Uh, John Sheridan not taking it. John Sheridan winning it. Chris Morris taking it. And it's back with Chris Morris now. Cascarino. Calvin. That's a corner. I think it's shaving up very nicely, thank you. Tony Galvin enjoying his afternoon at outside right. And Sheedy, that master of the set-piece delivery, to take the corner. Again, they're all mixed up. Cascarino couldn't quite force it home. Now it's with Ciobert. Galvin back and covering. And the last man back, Chris Morris. Whelan. And Morris. Cascarino tussling with Chizek. Did well to hold it up. It's Ireland's ball. And the throw quickly taken, but too quickly for Cascarino. It's Banchik, the Polish goalkeeper. Eight minutes to have time. 2-0 to Ireland. That's Morris. But Siobert was jumping at him, so that's a free kick to Ireland. Towards Aldridge. And Cascarino. And there's Sheridan. 3 0. Sweet as a nut from John Sheridan. As sweet a goal as you could ever wish to see. Six minutes from half time. Cascarino did all the donkey work there, taking the defender out of it. And there was nobody left to mark John Sheridan. And that was finished off with some aplomb. Chikanovsky. Orban. And Chikanovsky again. And he's got more for pace. Fortunately, Chikanovsky left his shooting boots in Warsaw. Top scorer in the Polish first division. But Moran, although he'd given him half a yard, was able to put him off sufficiently to prevent the clean strike. off the head of Kubitsky, but uh, Cascarino was said to have been pushing him in the back. Kubitsky. Chikanovsky. Silver. That's Hewton at the back, prepared to let it run. <laughs> he came out best, didn't he? Uh, free kick was signalled by the linesman, but the referee playing a sensible advantage. Cascarino, and now Sheedy. Cascarino and the referee tangling off the ball, but Cascarino back on his feet. Sheridan, and now Morris. And the fans are really loving this. Chris Morris. Right in the challenge of Kozetsky, and winning the throw. Ronnie Whelan was uh, imagining it happened there. <laughs> the, throw, the throw is what's been awarded. Tony Galvin. There's Whelan. And Moran letting that leave the field of prey, where the ball boy is uh, Liam Brady. Siebert. Foul on him. Pushing by Morris. Back to Moran. Cascarino, well jumped. Beat the Polish defender very well. 
but nobody there to take advantage of what he'd done. In the final minutes of the first half, indeed into added time at the end of the first half, time added on for Lukashik's head injury. What a highly successful and satisfactory first half it's been for the Irish team. Not the first 11 by any manner of means, but the changes that have been wrought for whatever reason have resulted in two outstanding performances. One at the back by Paul McGrath and one by Tony Cascarino up front. And this game has uh, half its length still to run. Here's Sheedy. Fouled rather crudely there by Prusik. Polish captain penalised. Free kick to Ireland. Sheedy, who opened the scoring on that free kick after just 11 minutes. This time it's Chris Hewton who's going to take it. If it hadn't been time, he would have taken it, but there was time for no more in this first half. And absolutely satisfactory. Poland, one of only three countries to have beaten the Republic of Ireland under Jack Charlton, really put to the cosh here. Only 45 minutes gone already. We've seen Kevin Sheedy, Tony Cascarino and John Sheridan hit the back of the net. Half time at Landside Road, it's 3-0 to the Irish. Let's hope there's more to come after this. Poland start the second half. You're welcome back to Lansdowne Road. They've made uh, further changes about which more anon. But the Irish happy with the 11 that's been doing service through the first half. Interesting, in the last six meetings with Poland, the Irish have failed to score. Their last victory over the Poles was back in 1973. Maya Dennehy getting the goal. Daily Mount that decided the issue on that occasion. But here they are with three against Poland, which equals their very best score against this opposition. And there could be more to come. Gregor Stenzel wins his first cap between the posts for Poland after a particularly uninspired first half from Vancic. Whelan, Holdridge again. Newton. This time it's Tarachevich. And now Orban. Totally underneath that. Cascarino's head. And battling on there. Eventually Whelan got there first, put the ball out of play. Fischik, the captain. Siebauer. Meant for Talisovic, but Sheedy coming away with it. Galvin. For Sheedy again. And half cleared by Wojcicki. Hewton. Sheedy. And Hewton on the overlap. With three of them in the middle for him. Cross aim for Aldrich. And he got the header on. But Stenzel was there to claim it. And the big man put under pressure by John Aldrich. Aldrich said to have fouled him. John Aldrich not getting much change out of Roman Wojcicki. Kubitsky going backwards. It's Whelan. Committing the foul. The man aggrieved was Vito Bentkovsky. The 
ground under that. Kubitsky. Teresiewicz. And again, it's McGrath. And remarkably well at the back. That's indeed the new England. Cross King Kosicki. And that's a throw to Ireland. And now Sheedy. And Morris. Look at the deflection. Puts it in the side net. Corner. Well, they all want to get into the act here. Chris Morris having the shot, which was deflected away. And it's a corner, which won't take place until Niall Quinn has joined the action. Neil Quinn, as he prefers to be known. And Paul McGrath leaves to resounding cheers. But the match, I'm sure they feel, is won anyway. Not that the winning and the losing is of paramount importance, it's to see what options are available. So McGrath leaves and Quinn goes on. They'll have a look at him, Morris Setters and Jack Chow. Not from that corner, but perhaps from the cross that'll now result. Whelan. In goes Quinn. The keeper all at sea, but he was pushed. And it's a goal kick to Poland. Quinn made his entry nine minutes into the second half. He won that one back. Too many white shirts around Chris Shute, but he managed to get it back. And that's played off the field for Cascarino. And put out by Wojcicki. and Sheridan yeah, showing lots of confidence and this time Shidi into the back of Tarasevic and time now for John Byrne to be added to the action for the Irish Ronnie Whelan comes off and John Byrne goes on Ronnie Whelan who's set uh, not at the best of luck with injuries this season. Dooley looked to reassert himself in time for the European Championship. John Byrne now sent on with 35 minutes of the match to go. Quinn and Sheedy. And Newton will go back. It's an interesting formation that's being played at the moment. Neil Quinn has been sent on to operate as a centre-half alongside Kevin Moore. And that's forward for Galvin. Cascarino. Byrne going in. Chikanovsky. Byrne again. And Galvin up the line. And that's Poland's throw. Chikanovsky. Peyton, happy to see that whistle away. It's time for another replacement on the Irish lineup. Liam O'Brien is the man who's coming on. 17 minutes into the second half. And he'll replace Tony Galvin. to release Seelbar, but Chris Morris 
was there and in command all the way. The ball forward wasn't all that it might have been. So that's the opportunity to send on O'Brien and not very far behind him will be Mark Kelly. Galvin comes off, so too does Sheedy. And it's all the outfield players on as substitutes. In fact, it's not, because Sheedy has gone back out onto the pitch. He doesn't want Sheedy to come off. In fact, he wants Sheridan to come off. So, having done well and having scored his first international goal, John Sheridan makes way for the little wisp of a lad from Portsmouth, Mark Kelly. And the roars of approval reading his inclusion in his only match here so far against Yugoslavia. He showed a remarkable willingness to run at opponents. That's what they want to see here now. All the Irish outfield substitutes on. Here's one of them, John Byrne. Still with the ball. No foul there. Orban. Tsikhanovsky's making a run through the middle. Batcher's available. Nobody picked him up on outside right. The passing wasn't of the best. Kubitsky, Batcha, but Kubitsky again. In behind Kelly. A Quinn in place. And then Kelly. Oh, a slack piece of work by the young lad. Kubitsky there, but the day saved by Chris Hewton. Throw to Poland. Finally decide, it's Darius Kubitsky who'll take the throw. Oh, here goes Urban. And a lovely goal scored by Varcha. All those changes, of course, in the Irish rearguard won't have helped the concentration. They came in pretty quick success, the 10-minute spell. They'd lost their shape. In behind them went Urban. And when he pulled it back, the substitute, Varcha, was there to side-foot it crisply home. So, 20 minutes of the second half gone. It's Ireland 3, Poland 1. Now Sheedy. And Aldridge is offside. Well, they're reclaiming the goal, which would have been his first in international competition. They left the bench to reclaim it. Everybody in the squad on their feet. But John Aldridge's first international goal won't count because... The player himself was offside. Hewton. And Morris. And again, the fullback winning out. Burn. Sheedy wants it square. He's got it. O'Brien wanted it ahead. He didn't get it, but it's with Hewton now. And Kelly wanted to try a little bit of magic and ended up only dispossessing his own man. And now here goes Varcha. Well, he solved the situation with a timely tackle. But his inexperience showed there as he tried to take on too much. Still, he is only 18. Quinn saved the corner and that's played up to Aldridge. Meat and drink to Prusy. In the final minute of the game. Kubitsky. And as the pole tumbled, Morris played it to burn. Tarashevich. Kupitsky, Chikanovsky. Oh, it's come to Benkovsky. It wasn't very far away. Substitute, Vitold Benkovsky, firing in what could be the last shot in anger in this match. Well, the clock shows we've now played the 45 minutes of the second half. We're playing the time that Mr. Roberts, the Scottish referee, is adding on for injury, and of that, there is none. The game is over. And Ireland's first victory over Poland since 1973, almost 15 years ago, registered on the back 
of an outstanding performance by several players, one of them Tony Cascarino, who crowned it with his first international goal after 30 minutes. That had been preceded by Kevin Sheedy's free kick after 11, and John Sheridan wrapped up the Irish scoring after 39. Varcha pulled one back for Poland midway through the second half. Eight and a half thousand came to watch it, and they leave happy, sending off their team with plenty of congratulations and best wishes to Germany. Just one more match to play, and that's in Norway a week on Wednesday. But for now at Lansdowne Road, it's final score of Ireland 3, Poland 1. Kevin, not a bad way to begin your career as a, an international captain. Um, yes, uh, delighted with the occasion. Obviously, uh, it's a great honour for me. And especially, um, as you say, first time to captain the international team. I'm delighted with the result as well, 3-1. You ran away with it a bit in the first half. Were you surprised that you got 3-0 up? Uh, I think on international level you would be, especially against uh, uh, Poland anyway. Um, certainly we wouldn't have expected it before the game, but uh, we played extremely well in the first half and uh, I think deservedly came in 3-0 up at half time. The other question has got to be asked about that performance. When is John Aldridge actually going to get a goal? <laughs> he came close on a couple of <laughs> occasions and uh, he must have been just fractionally offside the time he did stick it in. But uh, I think if John keeps plugging away, it'll come for him. Jack, you're making a bit of a habit of this. That's a record extended, eight wins in a row, and the best win to date over Poland. I, I thought we, we, we worked very hard today, and the, the, we had a, quite a few changes and embedded a few new people in, and the lads worked very hard, pushed in. We took the goals extremely well, enjoyed the third one. The dead ball ones uh, we're getting quite good at as well. And, uh, yeah, it was good to be 3-0 up against a team of Poland's quality. It was fine. You made the point of the past that when you've had to change the team around, you've given yourself even more problems. Did you do that today? When I've had a what? When you've changed the team around, you've given yourself problems about who to leave out. Did that happen again today? No, no, no. I, I'm pretty good idea of the team I want to play. And it's just a case of giving everybody a game, making sure that they're all, if they're called upon, can do the job we want them to do. Talking of calling upon people, you sent now Quinn on in the second half to uh, replace Paul McGrath at the back. Was that... An assessment of no, result. I was looking at Paul McGrath in the game and, and Kevin Morin, and we've got Mick injured, so what's the point in putting Mick at risk, uh, Paul at risk, when we're winning 3 0? You know, I was, it was, if, if anything happens to Paul or, or uh, Kevin Morin, we're, we're snookered. So I, had, I couldn't risk them both, so I'd, and, and Paul's so quick and is such a, an vital part of the, what we want to do that I, I said to him half time, you're coming straight off. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't have played him if I had anybody else, actually. Do you fancy him any more as a centre half now? Paul's a great player. He can play anywhere. He's very quick. He's playing midfield. He's very competitive. He's a good passer. He's got a lot, lot of ability. He can play anywhere you want him to play. Well, I'll phrase it another way. Have you made up your mind about who'll be your two centre? No, no, no. I haven't made me mind up. I, well, yeah, I have. I mean, Kevin Moran and uh, Mick McCarthy will be. So that leaves Tony Cascarino. Nice surprise. <laughs> Yeah, Tony did extremely well today. You know, he played against three very big lads at the back there and uh, handled them very well. In fact, we've asked Tony if he'll stay with us now instead of going off to Barbados and filling in. We, we decided to keep him. <laughs> uh, and what did he say? He said he'd be delighted to, yeah. yeah delighted well, to. I'd say you're delighted now. Just one to go and then it's just the real thing. Yeah, well, yeah, but we've got another one to win. We really just... Wrapping them in cotton wool and seeing we don't get anybody hurt before we go and play in Germany is the main thing. We, we've they've had a long, hard season and we've got to be a bit... Although we've got to get things done with them, we've got to do it very gently. Well, it was a great send-off in the end. Well, yeah, well, smashing. Well. Nice to win 3-1 anyway. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Winning is obviously a very good habit to get into. That's eight on the trot. The record has been extended. And for Jack Charlton, that's played 18, won 11, drawn four.